This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for starting your Saturday with us. I want to start this newscast by saying we are in trying times. The situation we're facing right now with the coronavirus outbreak is unprecedented in our lifetimes. We are going to spend most of KGW Sunrise this weekend talking about how the outbreak affects you and your lives as well as your families. We're human too. This is hard for us to try to navigate, but we're going to do it with you. We do have other news we want to share with you, though, like snow in Portland as we take a live look outside. Lacey, snow at Pioneer Courthouse Square. I know you can kind of see the flakes coming down. They're kind of big, thick, wet flakes. Wet. So we're not getting a lot of accumulation here on the valley floor. You can see here, this is at uh, the Terwilliger Curves and Sam Jackson Parkway. So that's up by OHSU, with some flakes coming down there. And we also have some viewer video from Grand Ron last night. The snow was coming down late last night there and, you know, sticking a little bit. So we wanted to move on, though, to the temperatures out there right now, because as you can see, we're just near or at freezing. So again, any snow that's coming down right now, not sticking on the valley floor. We've got 34 in Almsville, 33 in Salem, 35 in Dallas. So here's a look at government camp. Of course, it's snowing at the passes. We're going to see a lot of snow up there today in the Cascades. Here you are at Willamette Pass. We also saw some snow in the coast range. So this is at the sunset rest area, 1500 feet. You can see some snow on the uh, uh, side of the road there. It is actively coming down at Rainier Summit which is at about 500 feet and then at Lee's camp again lower elevation there is off to the side of the road and same at Dudley Hill uh, not on the road again not sticking but it is in the grass so here are your highlights for the snow this weekend our snow level is just going to be about 500 to 1500 feet so two to six inches in the foothills and same in the coast range but at the higher elevations we've got six to 12 inches expected so the Portland metro area the Willamette Valley you are under a winter weather advisory until noon today. So here's your day planner. Snow showers this morning. We could see a wintry mix later this afternoon. The more the day goes on, the more rain is going to be mixed in with that snow. And then the sun's going to come out, actually. So we are going to see some partly sunny skies. And that uh, sun is not going to let anything stick or freeze to the roads. But then overnight, it is going to get cold. We're going to start uh, Sunday with some frost. And we could see some snow Sunday as well. I'll have more on that coming up. Morgan? Jeez, we are getting everything <laughs> today. All right, thanks, Lacey. The U.S. House of Representatives passed a coronavirus aid package. This bill dedicates tens of billions of dollars for free coronavirus testing, paid sick leave and family leave provisions. The gavel came down just before 1 a.m. with only 40 no votes. President Trump backed the legislation on Twitter, encouraging Republicans and Democrats to support it. The bill now heads to the Senate, which is expected to pass it next week. Back here at home in Multnomah County, all public libraries are closed for the foreseeable future. That's just one of the changes leaders announced during a news conference last night. Library employees will still get paid, though, and some will be reassigned to other county jobs. County jails will no longer allow visitors, and the sheriff's office is opening additional space to spread out inmates. Portland police will be taking more of their reports online or over the phone, but still, of course, respond when there's a safety issue. These changes and event cancellations we've been telling you about this week are all in the name of social distancing to slow the spread of the virus. Doctors say while the changes may seem dr dramatic and drastic, the goal is to make things manageable for health care providers. If we wait until emergency departments are crowded and intensive care units are full, it is too late for these to be effective. Our best chance at having health care available to people when they need it is to take these steps now they work best when they are big and early. And Clark County's two newest cases of coronavirus are a married couple living in separate long term care facilities. They're now being treated at Peace Health Southwest Medical Center, though they were in different facilities. They did have close contact. Other patients in those care facilities will be quarantined and monitored by county public health. And eight of Oregon's coronavirus cases are at a veteran's home in Lebanon. That includes six of the newly announced ones. KGW's Devin Hoskins has the latest. There are no new cases here at the uh, veteran's home, but there are 28 tests that were done that came back negative for those residents that have been tested. Now, this is the single largest concentration of cases in the state of Oregon in one single location. All eight cases of the positive COVID-19 tests are men ranging from 55 to over the age of 80. Two were announced Wednesday, the other six on Thursday. The men are being isolated from the rest of the population 
and the ventilation system is only recirculating outside air. The building's been locked down to all visitors, but if a family member wanted to take their veteran home, the facility says they would not get in the way. We would be happy to work with any family on, on that decision. Uh, it, it does come with some risks, though. Uh, but, you know, absolutely, if a family member wanted to uh, take their, their veteran who's residing in the home home, then uh, we would certainly work with them. Uh, but the risks are that pretty much just like so many viruses and germs, cold germs, influenza, you know, it's pretty much out in the air now. The department has also set up a COVID-19 hotline or a telephone line for the residents and the general public to call in on. The number is 541 730 4344. They say it's updated at noon daily. In Lebanon, I'm Devin Haskins, KGW News. Some local businesses are impacted by more and more people staying away from public places right now, but they're getting creative to try to stay afloat. Family and the public. Oh. Uh, the busiest month of the year for the Northeast Portland Sports Bar, but without March Madness and other sports, things are very slow. So general manager Brandon Bowden is, he brought out shuffleboard to draw in customers. It's something they started last summer, their slow season. <laughs> By far. You know, when you have the opportunity to support your, your local bars and restaurants, uh, do it. Um, get, to, get gift cards, get whatever you kind of can with still maintaining that. Um, kind of social awareness um, because it is going to be really, really difficult, especially for the businesses. In times of crisis, experts say business owners should focus on two things. First, don't panic. And second, communicate. This is not a time to keep things to yourself. If you're a retail business, call your landlord. Uh, if you're a business that has a, a loan with a bank, call your banker. Talk to them about the situation. Be honest about where you're at. Stephen Green is a board member for Built Oregon, an advocacy group for small businesses around the state. He sent a survey to business owners asking how the coronavirus outbreak is impacting them. Out of more than 200 responses, 30% said they've lost more than $5,000 in the span of a week because of coronavirus. And restaurants are changing things up to keep customers coming in while limiting exposure. Burgerville is closing its dining rooms and focusing instead on drive through and delivery. drive throughs will stay open or you can have your waffle fries delivered through DoorDash. A handful of other local restaurants added curbside service or extra takeout, so no need to panic if the grocery store ends up running out of your favorites. Washington's governor ordered all K through 12 schools to close for the next six weeks. Oregon Governor Kate Brown ordered schools closed for the next two weeks, starting on Monday. One of the main concerns that comes with closing schools is what will happen with kids who rely on free or reduced meals at school. We found out many districts will still provide those meals. Tiger Tualatin let us visit Metzger Elementary yesterday. Employees handed out breakfast and lunch to kids who need them. Boxes of food were even going home with some families. They plan to do this over the next two weeks while schools are closed. It's very important. Um, over half of our families rely on free and reduced um, breakfast and lunch. And we're hoping to cause as little disruption to food resources for our families as possible. And that includes handing out food boxes at most of our schools today. Some local school districts have also family liaisons and counselors helping with grocery and utility bills if a parent isn't able to work and collect a paycheck. And because of the financial pressure some businesses and families are feeling, labor and community leaders are pushing for more protections for renters. Representatives from Portland Tenants United held a press conference with Portland City Commissioner Chloe Udaley. The group started a petition demanding landlords stop evicting tenants. So far, it has more than 3,000 signatures. What is the city of Portland, the state of Oregon, and the United States willing to do? I've been urging my colleagues at every level of government over the past several days to consider every action we can take to keep people housed and deliver relief to impacted businesses and workers. Mayor Ted Wheeler declared a state of emergency in Portland, giving the city more tools and power to fight coronavirus. He says utility companies will not be cutting off service to anyone who can't pay their water or sewer bill. And if you're not feeling sick, you don't need to be stuck inside all weekend. Doctors stress it's important to exercise and relieve any stress you have. A great way to do that might be checking out the Oregon Zoo. While the zoo closed indoor areas, most of the rest of the park is open. 
And did you hear about these guys, the brand new red pandas? The Portland Saturday Market is also open this weekend. And the Grotto in Northeast Portland, a beautiful sanctuary, and is offering free admission. It was a tumultuous week for the stock market. So you might be wondering, how much should we worry about our financial future? Well, coming up next, we'll get some advice from an expert.